Joining us now is Jeanette Epps. Dr. Epps, what a privilege it is for us to hear from you. Say hello to your hometown of Syracuse. Hello, Syracuse. <laughs> so you're about to head to space. How are you feeling? I'm feeling very excited and looking forward to the trip. Um, you're a proud alum of Corcoran and Lemoyne. How did each of those experiences get you to where you are today? Well, I will tell you that, um, you know, the teachers and professors that I had at both of those places were very supportive of everything that um, my sister and I wanted to do. So um, I think that um, Lemoyne in particular, um, uh, classic education, Jesuit education, um, really helped me, you know, throughout my career, um, especially writing as an analyst or even writing technical papers in graduate school. So there's um, a lot of um, love that I have and uh, appreciation for the folks in Syracuse. I hear you were naturally good at science and math back in the day. What inspired you to keep going down that path, especially when it wasn't as common for a woman? Well, I will tell you, it wasn't natural for me at all. Um, what was natural was to work hard and, to, you know, because neither of our parents were engineers or scientists. So to try to figure things out and work hard and diligent to seek out things and figure things out was what um, my twin sister and I learned to do. And so that path was really what kept us um, going forward, just being curious and wanting to know um, was couple, sort of the big thing that kind of helped Janet and I move forward. Having that curiosity was, was key. Outside of your education, what was it like growing up in central New York? Well, it's funny because my mother really kept Janet and I, like, really close. <laughs> we didn't venture out a whole lot. But growing up in central New York, it's a beautiful place. Um, you know, between the Finger Lakes and all the different areas around Syracuse, very beautiful place. In fact, um, a friend of mine was um, talking about retiring there in the future. So there's a lot of great things that started there, you know, part of the nuclear program. There's um, kind, all kind of uh, bases there, like Fort Trum, Griffiths Air Force, Air Force Base. There's all kind of great things around there. So, you know, upstate New York is just, you know, it's near and dear to my heart. And it's, it's interesting because I never dreamed that I'd want to go back and, and live there. Usually people don't go back to their hometown to retire or even, um, you know, to visit often, but um, Syracuse is really near and dear to my heart, so. I, I mean, you're young. Is that a hint that maybe when you retire, you'll come back? <laughs> well, I appreciate that comment. I'm uh, not as young as uh, I once was, but um, yeah, I mean, there is, you know, a chance, um, not just to like um, visit, but maybe even retire or, um, spend part of my time there. So hopefully in the future I'll have a, after I come back from space, I should have a much, much clearer picture. I will say you've got other travel to do in the meantime. Um, you might be used to the uniqueness of your job at this point, but for the rest of us, you're a little girl from Syracuse about to go where few men and women have ever gone. Does that still hit you? <laughs> yes, it does. Um, I remember a training in Star City, Russia, and um, that, statement came went right through my mind like how did this girl from Syracuse get here in class with an instructor speaking nothing but Russian and it's me and an interpreter in class so um yeah it is um it's not lost on me um how incredible some of these things that I've been able to do were and are and um I am happy to represent Syracuse in that in a lot of these endeavors and bring it back take all of that I've learned and take it back to Syracuse and tell people that this, you know, if you see me doing this, there's absolutely no reason you can't do these also. Let's talk about the trip a little more. What will your specific role and responsibility be aboard the International Space Station once you're there? Well, I'll be one of the flight engineers and I'll participate in some research. Um, I'll be a research experiment in and of myself where we're collecting blood, um, saliva, we're doing a, a bunch of different things to figure out how to get the human body to live longer out, outside the Earth's protection. We'll conduct experiments in materials. Materials are very important because we want to develop ways to protect from radiation as well. Um, we'll also take care of the International Space Station. 
which is a large loading laboratory, which is an experiment in and of itself. But we'll take care of the space station, whatever maintenance that has to be done, we'll conduct that. And so everything that we do on the International Space Station will be a stepping stone from low Earth orbit to the moon. So all that we learn in low Earth orbit, we can use on the moon um, to develop a permanent presence on the moon eventually, and maybe even use a lot of that stuff that we learn on the space station as well as the moon to take it back to maybe Mars. Uh, I think in my lifetime, we may develop a presence on the moon, permanent presence on the moon, and then from there, maybe on to Mars. You've been an astronaut now for 15 years, but this is the first time you'll be leaving the Earth's atmosphere. You've seen so many pictures of Earth. What will it be like to see that, that world, that, 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 that body from a window? I think um, it will, um, the excitement of seeing the Earth from that vantage point is, um, you know, it's surreal. I, I think seeing the Earth from that vantage point will, uh, for me, just thinking about human uh, life and all aspects of it and how we are leaving it behind. We're going to try to establish life on the space station. We will establish life on the space station. But that uh, is an incredible uh, endeavor for us to see the Earth from that and just think about how we want to behave towards each other once we return to the Earth's surface and how we are all definitely one human race, not multiple different <laughs> types of things, but how we treat each other, how we even greet each other um, is, is you know, even now that's very important in my mind. It sounds like this is more than a science mission for you. It's almost a, a humanity mission. It, it has to be that because um, we don't go alone as an individual. We go knowing that we were trained by so many people here on the ground who are a part of the team, but you know, we get to be the face of the team. And it's not just, we don't go as an individual. None of this, um, we, there's no way we can get to the International Space Station, get to the moon or even Mars as an individual. We do it as a team. We do it as an incredibly large team. My colleagues span from Japan, Russia, Europe, uh, all over the world. And so how do you not think about humanity as a whole? Dr. Epps, we, we really appreciate you joining us here in Syracuse and on News Channel 9. Best of luck up in space. We look forward to catching up with you when you're back. I look forward to catching up as well. Thank you. I look forward to chatting with you while I'm in space as well. We would look forward to that. Best wishes to you. Thank you.